I like that darn music. <laughs> Hello, everyone. You've reached again Junie Lai and Williams Adventures. Minus Junie Lai today, she had to uh, run some errands. She had to go to the uh, immigration's office. And I have to get my exit clearance, guys, because I'm heading back to the USA in April, right after Easter, for a short time to take care of some business. So I have a guest today, and it is Charles Davis from the God Principles YouTube channel. And I'm going to let him introduce himself right around now, guys. What's up, everyone? My name is Charles Davis. Uh, my channel is The God Principles, and William is also a co-host on my channel where we talk about living in the Philippines in reality. Uh, and so it's a pleasure to meet everyone, and we're going to have a heck of a show for you. I promise you. <laughs> All right, William, you yeah, we're, we're looking for Char forward to Charles being on our show today. We see we already have Mike in the house. Mike, we appreciate that you're always in the house. Usually you're the first one in the house, and we appreciate that. So welcome to those that will be tuning in. Um, we're going to be talking about a subject, but of course, if you have any questions, um, anything that you want to talk about, feel free to tap that in, and we'll be glad to respond as the best that we can. But our subject today is going to be, what must you bring when you're coming to the Philippines? That, that's the overall subject. And uh, it's a broad subject, guys. There's a lot that we can talk about in that subject. Uh, of course, Charles has been here for almost two years. I've been here for almost two years. And, um, you know, we're still learning. We don't know it all. But we do know enough to give back some information so people don't have to make the same mistakes that we make. So that's what we're going to talk about, guys. And of course, remember, guys, to subscribe and like. That helps us here at the channel, guys. If any of you are planning on coming over in the near future, uh, remember that you don't want to travel without travel insurance. And the insurance that I use two, three different times when I came over was Safety Wing Travel Insurance. So those things are in our link description, guys. You can avail in the link. Also, those that are looking for LDR relationship, you want to talk and meet someone before you come to the Philippines. Junie Lai and I met on Christian Filipina. That was the dating app that has the less scammers. They, they uh, vet it well. Um, they screen it well. And the people on that app, usually are looking for serious relationships, guys. So that's the one that we, we recommend. We use it ourselves. And of course, we don't recommend anything that we have not used ourselves. We've used that, guys. So, Charles, I'm going to let you, I just want to ask you a question. That's how we're going to start this thing. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question. The question is, when did you decide to come to the Philippines. What put your mind on the Philippines? Well, how did it go? How did it get started? It got started just hey guys, my name is Charles. It got started uh just before COVID hit in America. I was working as a security guard to supplement my income, and they sent me home, and I was telling God, it's like. I didn't come this far in life to be by myself. And God say, well, you always wanted an Asian wife. And uh, he was right. I totally forgot about that. That was a long dream from when I was younger. So I got on YouTube. I did some research. And I came across um, what was the Filipino P. And she was talking about Filipinas. And I actually signed up with Christian Filipina, but then you had to go through an interview. And so they were going to call me later on the next day. And I went home and 
my brother and his wife came by and I told them what I planned to do. And they said, well, you don't have to go through an interview. We got a person in the family. And they said, Filipino. He put me on a Facebook yes. group. Yes. Then, then I, I got introduced to a, a, a woman on that Facebook group. We chatted for two years and I made a decision to come over here to visit her. And once I met her, uh, we decided to get married. So I went back home, sold everything and came right back. I've been here ever since December 2nd of 2022. That's how I got wow. here. Wow. And, That's um, what my channel is called, The God Principles. I, William and I, we rely heavily. I saw, we, I, I saw, this is so funny. I don't know why I thought about this. When you said safety wing travels, I say, wait a minute. My safety wing is God. I don't know about anybody else. You know? So, you know, that's how I got here, guys. Hey, Mike. Welcome once again to our channel. We appreciate you always chiming in. This is Charles Davis. He has a YouTube channel called The God Principles. And we thought that we would share with him. He would share with us today. He's been about here in the Philippines as long as I've been. We've both been here about two years living straight. I had came over three times before that to visit. Um, but I, I think that Charles has a wealth of information so that we're going to pick his brain today. <laughs> what I do want to talk about a little bit is one of the first things that you need when you get off the plane. And this is something that Charles and I discussed before. Uh, especially with things that the events that's going on, not only in the U.S., but around the world. Um, you know, we see the trouble that's in the China Sea involving the Philippines and China and relationships. Of course, the U.S. is treaty bound to protect the Philippines. So it's it's a sticky situation, guys. Everybody's watching it. Uh, we have the, you know, the, the yellow caution flags up individually. We're watching. But as everybody says, things happen, so I don't have a red flag up, just a yellow caution flag I'm watching. But, you know, it's it's all around the world. There's always going to be wars and rumors of wars. It's biblical. So not too worried, but I'm keeping an eye on it. Also, one of the things that you need to do when you're coming to the Philippines, and this is first and foremost, guys, because in the United States, and I'm heading back there in 10 days, guys. Uh -huh. um, and I'm, I'm really not looking forward to it except to meeting, seeing my family. But the Philippines is a non-aggressive society in general. And we'll talk about that a little later. But the U.S. has turned into an aggressive society, especially with the political climate uh, in the last few years. And when you decide to come on vacation to the Philippines or even transition in so-called move to the Philippines as we had, a lot of times you have to leave your attitude of aggression at the airport that you're leaving from. You can't bring that aggressive mindset. You have to bring a different attitude to the Philippines because if you don't, you're like a bull in a china shop. And a lot of foreigners, as they call you here in the Philippines, you're either a foreigner or you're a Filipino. There is no, you're black, you're white, you're this, you're that. No matter what country you're from, no matter what color you are, if you're not a Filipino, you're a foreigner. So foreigners need to realize, that's the first thing I say, when you get off the plane, leave your attitude behind because you're in a land, you're in a new environment where you want to put your best foot forward. Uh, what do you think about that, Charles? I'm having an internal laugh moment because you said you're either a Filipino or a foreigner. I said you left yeah. one out. The one you left out, you could be a fool here. We, we're yes. talking about yes. you could be a real yes. big fool, and we're talking about what you should bring. Don't leave your common sense on the plane, please. I mean, so when, when I landed here, the exoticness of this island and the women and the excitement of all the newness, I, it took me a while to get off that. I'm still on that yes. cloud nine, but I got I, my brains came back because <laughs> I got some stories for you yes. guys. Y'all gonna love this. Yes. 
So yeah, and we we want to hear. Him. Go ahead. Oh, you do. Uh, but wait, wait. Yeah. William, can I can I interject something right here? Certainly. Okay, okay. You know, William and I, we talked yesterday. We always we always chit chat back and forth. You know, and I want welcome to guys. William. Okay, who's that? Dust Bagels. What's up, man? Anyway, William, I want to know how you feeling about going back. You know, to the land of the living dead. That's a big topic. You know, and I'm really I'm going to uh, I'm going to I'm going to answer it. I'm a I'm a address Daz here. He says years ago when I visited kinfolk in Indiana, I had to switch my aggressive offensive driving to defensive. Um, then he he Daz says nowadays it's GTA free for all. I agree. <laughs> I mean, it's it's something that you have to to turn off. I mean, because we don't, guys, we don't realize that we have the aggressive attitude because we're among aggressive society in the U.S. So everybody's almost like that. And so we don't a lot of times realize that we have it until we get off the plane and then we're starting to walk around in the supermarkets and stuff. And you're noticing the people around you, it's almost like they're on a chill pill. <laughs> And yeah. we have to yeah. like tone it down. Now, after being here almost two years, I've lost that aggression. To answer Charles' question, the answer Charles' question is this. I am anxious about going back. I, I really am. I'm anxious about the environment. I'm anxious about the political climate. And, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing my family. But remember, I've been living over here for almost two years. In a non where everybody speaks to you when you walk down the, the street. I mean, I've seen beautiful women that could be Miss Philippines, and you're walking down the street and you say Marabuntak, which is good morning, and they're smiling and saying good morning back to you. Guys in the US, women that look that good think it think it's a that they're doing you a favor if they even speak to you. <laughs> you know, and wow, here it's just common, it's common for them to speak to you. And it takes getting used to, uh, guys, the friendliness of law enforcement. I mean, these guys are not looking like you did something wrong. You know, guys say, hey, can I get a picture with you? He's standing there with him 16. Hey, you want to take a picture? Hey, American, you want to take a picture? Hey, you know, so it's 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 a non-aggressive society. Mike's asking the question of Charles. Does Charles, I retired from uh, security services. I worked in work, healthcare and hospitals. Oh, okay. Okay, Mike. It, it, it's a real difference over here when you see a security guard and they have a pistol holster and it's empty. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, what's the point of this? They don't carry guns. If you see a guy with a gun, it's going to be M16. He's probably going to be standing in front of a Yes. Bank. That's about it. Yeah. You know, they're, they're there, you know, here in, in uh, Basewater. We have security guards, but they're here to regulate who comes in and out because this is an upscale community. Um, I <laughs> hey William, do you, I bribe the security guards when I go out in the track? I make sure I bring them back some donuts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, they give me special treatment. They give me I, say, I know how to deal with these. Well, I know you know what, Charles? Police are police, no matter where you go. They love donuts. <laughs> yeah. Guys, tell us, can you hear us? Can you see us? Uh, oh, this is a new app I'm using, StreamYard. How do you guys like it? Let me know. A lot of William, since Mike says a lot of changes since you left in the U.S. Tell us about it, Mike. I'm, let us know what they are. I'm not looking forward to it. Tell me, tell me about the changes before I hit JFK. I know it's going to be like walking into a whole different environment. And uh, I'm trying to get myself spiritually, mentally, and emotionally prepared for it. Uh, but I know it's going to be very different. Dow says, I'm doing security now. Most younger ones are on ADHD meds and buried in their phones. 
<laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He's yeah. right. He's right. I was working at a, a job core facility and it was where parents brought their children that they couldn't handle no more. They were 18 or older and they were just too much for their parents. Or your parent, their parents would bring them to the job core facility and drop them off and never come back. I've heard yeah. them say, don't you come back. It, it was really bad. And I had to deal with those uh, teenagers and young adults that have those mental and emotional issues and resentments. And so, you know, I'm real familiar with that aspect of, of dealing with what's going on in America. But what we're seeing now on YouTube, it's like William and, I, William and I both are so grateful that God showed us a way out of that place before all that jumped off. Because I'm from Chicago. Yeah. And, and Chicago is just, it was Wild West when I left. It ain't gone, gone to crazy town now. What they did on Roosevelt Road down there, um, you may have seen it on the news. That's an upscale news. Person, oh, and hey, Junie. Do you, know, you know this woman that just came and said, assign me anybody? <laughs> Looks like a Filipina. But Junie Lee, has, Junie Lee has to run out, but she wanted to say hi to all our subscribers and say hi to Charles and everybody. So you want to say anything to the to the gang, uh, Junie Lee, before you <laughs> Good morning, everybody. For today, I will not do live because I have some important things to do. Uh, I get here, him uh, exit clearance for his going back home. <laughs> yeah. He'll be leaving soon. <laughs> leaving soon. I think it's nine or ten days, guys. You know, yeah. we're both loud and clear, Mike. Great. So the, the app is working well. All right, That's Junie. Great. Well, how do you feel about William going back to America for? How do you feel about that? <laughs> That's the saddest part. <laughs> yeah, we uh we we had to go through the pandemic of two years. Yeah, I, um, but, but for me, I'm very I'm not uh because I already used to it before that we all yeah. LDR. Yeah, we were in LDR for almost three years, uh, I, you know, because I came over here twice, then the pandemic uh, jumped off. So we had two years that our, a lot of LDRs crashed and burned during the, the pandemic. But Junie Lee and I had to thank the, we're thankful that we had met each other three times yeah. before the pandemic in person, which guys, that's what Charles and I talk about, makes all the difference in the world uh, yeah. once you meet them in person. but. Okay, guys. I let you. I She's let heading you out now. to get my clearance, guys. So I can. Uh, we'll talk about that another time. Bye -bye. Next time. <laughs> hey, you want to say hi, Nelly? Say hi to all all of our viewers here. Hey, Nelly. She's heading out. See you guys later. But yeah, I I think that that's one of the things that um. You have to be aware of when you're when you're coming to the Philippines, number one, and that's what Charles and I identified. You know, there's a lot of things we're going to talk about that you need to do that are the hidden things that, that a lot of expats, even people on vacation, forget to do. But the one of the main things that can save your life, I mean, literally save your life, is your attitude being checked at the door, guys. Because one thing I can tell you, Filipinas, Filipinos, are a non-aggressive society. But if you're the kind of person that likes to go to the clubs, as we've seen in the news, a foreigner just lost his life, got shot by a rapper at a club here not far from us in Lapu Lapu City, Cebu City, right down the road. And it was because the foreigner was acting aggressive and seems like to me when I watched the video, the Filipino rapper was trying to leave the situation the foreigner kicked his car, got in front of the car. Long story short, dude pulled out a, a pistol and shot him. Listen, they have a thing here in the Philippines called losing face. And even though Filipinos are not aggressive whatsoever, and you can talk to Charles about that, if you yeah. make them lose face, which means you shout, you scream, you yell at them, you may embarrass them in front of their peers, they don't take it well. They don't take it well. And they could respond violently. And remember, if you're thinking that other foreigners are going to jump in and help you, 
It's not going to happen, guys. Nope. It's not nope. going to happen. <laughs> so, mm -mm. so you 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 have to check that attitude because I've been here almost two years. I've never had a problem. Of course, I don't frequent clubs. When I do go out to live music, I go out to resto places where there's live music, there's food, there's not a lot of drunk people around. So another thing that we need to talk about, about what you must bring when you come to the Philippines, guys, is the, the proper character and moral ethics, because those also can save you from a lot of trouble. What do you think, Charles? Wow, that's a, that's a really good topic, because I got a story. See, over here in Basewater, when I came here, one of the uh, YouTube bloggers, he said, don't just hang out with uh, people like yourself. He said, get around, move around. William, I heard the, the craziest story hanging out with the guys yesterday because we talked about it last night. Now, there's a Korean guy in our group. We get there in the morning and have water and they drink their beer. And he was talking about a friend of his that landed in Manila. And so he called himself going to have a little, you know, mature fun with a, a Filipina. Yes took her back yes. to his room and 15 minutes after she got there the police showed up and then she started crying talking about he made her have sex against her will and she was under 18. they wow. took him to jail it was a setup wow. it was yes. a setup and it cost him three hundred thousand pesos to get out of jail. That's a lot of money. That's yeah, it a, is. That's, that's a costly lesson. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, these are the kind of stories that, you know, if you're going to come here, and this is one of the things that William and I had noticed, let somebody that's living here guide you through this. Because you don't want to do everything you see everybody doing. You just don't. You just don't. You don't, you don't know how that person has become acclimated, how they establish relationships. You're a newbie to this environment, real new. And I'm, and, and in some ways, I'm still new because all the time yeah. I'm learning something. I'm learning right. something about these people. My second story was there was a guy here. He's uh, from Denmark, some, several of them. And so he went to... Um, Batangan Island to hang out with some yeah. of his buddies that had flew here to hang out with him. He was there with his girlfriend and they got to drinking and they started beating him up in the hotel room. His girlfriend locked his herself in the bathroom. After it was all over, the police got him out of Batangan Island on the boat at four o'clock in the morning, all beat up, but his girlfriend ended up in the hospital because it caused her so much stress. She had menstrual bleeding and they took her to the hospital. I'm just telling you, I'm hearing wow. some weird, some story. Yeah, it was like, I was telling William yesterday, I say, these guys need to hear this. They, I mean, the setups about 18 year olds, they, they might, you, if you're in the wrong situation and you haven't had somebody to guide you through what you want to do, it could be very detrimental to your trip. You're not going to like it here. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm just going to be pure, but naked honest. There's some things about this culture that I've had to adjust to. Their morals and values are a little different. Um, their emotional development is different. It's not bad. It's just different. Um, they're, they're shy people. They present nice and friendly. Uh, but you're an outsider. Well, Dallas says that few vloggers have the vitals inside. Like outside. You got to have, you know, when you're coming... From JFK in New York on the East Coast, it's 8,500 miles. We literally, guys, 
the Philippines, and some of you that have been here, like Mike, I know other ones have been here before. Um, some have. This is on the other side of the world, guys, literally. 12, 13 hours. It's 16 hours one way that I have to fly to come back. One way. Um, it's on the other side of the world. And Daz was saying, even back in the late 70s, when I worked with a bunch of Panay manufacturers in a Silicon Valley, in Silicon Valley, if one had an issue with you, they all did. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. If you go into one of the cars and you start to act like some of the people acting and they bring that same aggressive uh, mentality into these bars, it ain't, it's not going to end well, guys. It's not going to end well. Um, they're going to stick together. And the other thing that I realized immediately, if not after a few weeks, I'm a visitor here. They invited me in as a tourist. I don't live here. I don't talk about politics. I don't frequent bars or clubs anywhere where people get drunk. Because if people get drunk, their brains, as the liquor goes in, their brains go out. To get that and liquid courage. It can cost you. It can cost you guys. If that if that foreign uh, uh, young man would have just let the Philippine rapper drive off, he would have never got shot. But when he kicked his car, and I was watching the video, there were other Filipino men around and women. And it made him lose face, as I talked about. That's, as Charles said, their culture's different. It might, you know, for black people in the U.S., it might be the N-word. For white people, for European, everything's different that might tick you off. But for Filipinas, it's about shame. If you shame them in front of their peers, that's a big disrespect to them. And they, they got to live with that. And they're not going to take it. They're not going to take it. And I make sure even if I'm in a cab or I'm on a tricycle, if the guy's going a different way and I want him to stop, I, you know, I just tap my shoulder and say, hey, could we stop over there so I can get some banana bread or something? I don't demand anything. So the character and politeness and friendliness will get you much farther here. Yeah. And you won't have yeah. any problem, guys, because I've never met, I, Charles can tell you this, I've never met a friendlier people in my life than the people that I've met here in the Philippines. Remember, guys, so remember to subscribe. Remember to um, go ahead and like the channel. That really helps us, guys. We appreciate that. Uh, um, it helps us not only with that, but it helps us with the, um, the algorithms and all these things, guys. So don't forget to subscribe. If you're looking for travel insurance and you're... Um, Coming to the Philippines, I suggest that you get insurance. I always had insurance when I came. Where I, I came with a, a a young guy that didn't get travel insurance when he came here, and he got sick, and he almost had to go to the hospital. He ate something. Um, he, of course, he had enough money, but you know, the travel insurance is not that expensive. It starts safety uh, wing that you would see in our link. It starts from the time you leave the airport in the USA or whatever country you're coming for. And it doesn't end till you touch back down. If you lost your goods, if you got sick, this was back in the COVID days. So if you got COVID, it covered that. It covered your stay in oh, a wow. COVID hotel those days. So it was instrumental that you had it. I think I paid $130 or $40 back in 2019 for a whole month. That was for the month of coverage. So it covered me the whole time I was here. And it stopped when I hit the ground. Um, if you're coming over as an expat, guys, it's also good to have that safety wing. And it's in our link description. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah. If you you can go into the widget and you could push uh, one of the widget buttons, it'll tell you for your age how much it cost you exactly. Um, and you can cancel it at any time. Uh, that's And as I said, I was telling Charles this, Junie Lee and I, we don't recommend anything we haven't tried ourselves. If, right. if we haven't done it, we don't, don't recommend it. So, so guys, check it out. But back to our subject. Um, tell us some of the nuts and bolts stuff, Charles, that you might be want to share backwards. Um, <laughs> what's some of the little things that, if you forget, it can cause you a lot of problems here. If you forget them, 
capacity if you're not only if you're coming on vacation, but if you're especially if you're coming to transition as an expat. Oh, wow. Uh, realize that your electronic devices are 120 volts. It's 220 over here. Or to use some converters so that you don't plug in your equipment because it's not going to fit nowhere because the electrical outlets are different. You know, that was one of the things. And one of the problems that I ran into is on that airplane flight and you have those where you have to switch over and you've been using your phone and you need to charge it in the airport, you might need one of those converters. Yeah. You know, and yeah. because you, you don't want you don't want your phone to run out because it's part of your lifeline. It's your only lifeline, personally. Yes. Um, take pictures or whatever, because some of the airports are fabulous. I was in um, yeah. Hungary. No, Korea. The Korean airport was like an art museum to me. I was like, wow, wow. I didn't know it was like this. Yeah, I took pictures. They had works of art. They had uh, the Korean museum where you can go in there and, and see what Korea, how they dressed and everything. It was beautiful. The other thing that William and I talked about is what are the things we run into that you would just not expect? I mean, things that you thought were okay and you get here and you find out, uh-oh, I forgot something. My big, The biggest yes. problem I had, now I got here December 2nd. In January, my visa card expired. Something I didn't even think of checking. I said, my visa's good. I got the new card, but I never checked the expiration date. So good point. I had been here a month and all of a sudden couldn't get no money. Couldn't get no money. Good point. But I did have a plan B. I put my nephew on my bank account and I was able to call him and tell him to send me money. It took, it took wow. It took, and to show you how things can get messed up in a strange way, when I called them to get my new Visa card, it took two months because the Visa card company had run out of plastic because it was right after COVID. So there, there was no plastic to even print me a new card. So it took about two months for me to get a visa card. Who knew? Every everything mm -hmm. that's everything that's relatively easy in the U.S. is not here. If you if you're coming and you're coming on a, I see your comment, Daz. We'll, um, that two twenty adapter, he Daz says. But if you don't have a two twenty adapter, you can plug your G USB in the back of uh, most TVs. That's true. I know that I had a, a, a air conditioner shipped over here, brand new in the box, um, Balak buying. And when it got here, it was not set to be used in their electric system. We had to spend, uh, I think it was 75 US dollars. And we shipped that to uh, my wife's family in Mindanao because they didn't have one. Um, and it cost them 70, it cost $75 to put the uh, appropriate electrical hookup for that air conditioner from the US. Um, even my, um, the extension cords that uh, have the uh, emergency shut off on them and things, they didn't work over here. They, their, their electrical system is not the same as ours. And this is another, uh, uh, a pro tip, I call it, make sure if you're coming to um, be an expat that you extend all your credit cards out four years or five years, as far as you can get them extended before you leave. Um, ex even if your license, your driver's license has a year left, go get that ex extended within a six month time before you leave. Extend it another four or five years, your state driver's license. Go mm -hmm. to your credit unions and bank cards, go in, um, few months before you leave, if you have like a year left on that card, get them extended out far as possible so that they don't run out for quite a while while you're here. If your passport guy has another year on it out of the 10 years or two years, bite the bullet, go get another passport before you come here that would extend it out 10 years. Don't 
give it, don't just come here with two years. Cause as Charles can tell you, time goes by quickly and Ooh, you have to go to Manila. If you're depending on where you're living to the embassy and you have to make an appointment to try to get those things done. Another tip, if you're transitioning to the Philippines, whether you have a pension, whether you have social security, make sure that you, before you move, that you see at least two checks, at least two, come into your bank account before you come. It's very hard to straighten it out. You have to have a phone. I know a guy, and I will tell you a story. One of my uh, members, uh, one of my channel members, uh, Gerard, great channel member, Gerard. Appreciate you if you're out there. And he came to visit the Philippines. He didn't have, he had a phone that they put a chip in so he could get talk in the Philippines, but he had no way to get code from his bank back, he, you know, from the U.S. They wouldn't send him a code. He couldn't get into his apps. So I suggest I use Skype. It cost me $8.52 every three months. It gives me an American phone number that yep. I can be called from America and I can call America. I can yep. call the Social Security office. I can call my banks. If somebody needs a code, even if that Skype don't let them send the code, which it does, they'll call you with the code and you can get the code and get into your social security app, your bank apps. Guys, these sound like little things, but over here in the Philippines, if you can't get in the maps, you can't track your money. You can't track anything. I got something else to tell you about that Skype number. When William told me about, you told me about that, William. I said, cool, I got the Skype number and I started calling. Yes, two factor people. verification. And I started calling people on the Skype number and they didn't answer the phone. So I had to go on Facebook and I messaged them. I said, I'm trying to call you. And they say, Well, I didn't recognize the number, so I didn't answer. <laughs> Yeah. And it's yeah. like I'm calling my friends to say, hey, you can reach me now. It's not going to be no yes. international call, but they not recognize the number. So, you know, yeah. that was, you know, that that's a, that's another got you that it's like, oh, the Skype number is fine. Yeah, but a lot of people don't want to answer the strange phone numbers. And the good thing about it is, guys, you can also pay a couple extra U.S. dollars and you can get text included in that Skype. Um, I made sure that I text my appropriate friends that this is my Skype international number with it, but it's an American number. It's either, it's either, uh, you know, it's going to be appropriate to the state that you're in. Right. Um, I right. made sure it was a Pennsylvania number. So people knew this call was coming from PA or, or I, I believe you could also get a 1-800 number. Um, but the thing is you have to have a way to contact the United States. Because if you can talk to your friends and things on Messenger, which is great, it's great. But you can't talk to Social Security office. You can't talk to uh, business offices that you need to. And another thing, guys, if you're transitioning, and even if you're coming on vacation, you can transfer yourself money on World Remit, MoneyGram, Western Union. You don't have to keep using a debit card. You you should only use a debit card for emergency. Bring enough money if you're coming on vacation that you can tr transfer some of your money to Filipino money. Um, but don't you don't have to keep occurring those fees uh, for debit cards. Uh, I transfer my whole budget every month, $1,200, $1,300, for about $15, $18 on MoneyGram to myself. And it covers me for the whole month. I only got to do one transfer, not keep running back and forth with a debit card. So there's little things that you learn, guys that save you a lot of headaches. And these come under the category of what the things you must bring when you come to the Philippines. Right attitude, know the little things that you gotta do with your cards, cause it's hard to fix little problems here. It's much easier in the US, you can walk into the social security office. You could go to your bank. Hey, your bank is 8,500 miles away and it's 12 hours time difference. You're sitting up in the middle of the night trying to contact these people because it's day to them. So these are just some of the little boxes that a lot of people are not aware of. Even if you're coming on a vacation, 
make sure you have insurance. Anything can happen at any time, guys. These roads and highways, they're getting more modern. They have a brand new bridge. Am I right, Charles, here in uh, uh, connecting uh, uh, Cebu City with Mandawi and the other places here? Yeah, but yeah, a lot of the roads, I mean, some of these people drive here at night without lights on. <laughs> it could be an accident waiting to happen, guys. Even though they don't have a lot, you would think they would have more. And let's not talk about the traffic in Manila, guys. Ooh, it's beyond I noticed, belief. I noticed that guy from the California. Now, I've been to California, and I, I said, just for the heck of it, this was back in the 80s. I got on uh, the California highway, and I said I never would complain about traffic again because I'd never seen traffic like that. It was backed up from the entrance ramps all the way through the city. I said, it's the worst stuff I'd ever seen. I never complained until I got here. <laughs> then I saw these guys on these motocross motorcycles driving around. It's like, oh my God, there is the worst one. <laughs> you know, and it's like, it took <laughs> yeah. me months. Yeah, It took me months just to ride one of those uh, trikes to take us around. Because I'm a big guy. I don't like it. The cabs are real small. They Filipino side. You very rarely see big people like us around here. We, we're huge compared to yeah. them. And so everything is Filipino size. It's like, oh, yeah. the couches, the bathrooms. I mean, it's I mean, it's just it's it's Philip, it's the Philippines. But that's that's the current yeah. way we deal with. Oh, you ran into that? Well, what we we just say, where are you? Oh, that's right. I'm in the Philippines. So, you know, don't come and expect yeah. it to be like America. You know, it's like we're on an island. Everything has to be shipped yeah. here. That's the first thing. All all our food goods and stuff. If it's not here on the island, that means it comes here by ship. That's the only way anything yes. gets here. The other part about living here on the Philippines is don't come here expecting to find American items. A lot, a lot of them they don't have. If it's in a can, you yeah. can find it, but it's going to cost you a little bit more. It is. Yes. If you, yes. So um, one of the things I had to adjust to is the eating style here. Because this, this reminded me, when he talked about that guy getting sick, I got sick the first month I was here. And guess how I got sick? William, I was went to Batanian Island. We stand on the beach, and this beach boy come up. He say, hey, you want to buy a, a coconut? I said, it was right off the tree. All right? And I said, yeah, that'd be yeah. cool. You yeah. know, and so he took his machete, and he whacked it open for me. And I sat there, and I drank it. That night... My body started detoxifying itself. I lost 20 pounds. It took me about two weeks. I mean, it was it was horrible, William. I'm serious. I was really worried. We came back. I was in bed for a week. I look, I had to go get I had to go get the a potty uh pot because I was it, my body was draining so fast I couldn't even get to the bathroom. It was that bad. But yeah. then I find out that you're not supposed to drink it like that. The lo locals can. You coming yeah. in here, you can, your body ain't used to that. I, I, there's, there's a number of things. And we see you guys. Yeah, you know, they do drive here without the lights. They do. They do it like it's normal. And uh, their horn beeping is not like over in the U.S. Uh, hey, when we blow our horns at people, it's because we're angry. They don't, they're not blowing their horns at you here angrily. That's how they communicate with each other. They communicate with each other if they're going left, they're going right with the horns. Uh, the one thing I do like, the one thing I do like about traffic here is that a lot of the red lights have the time that counts down to the traffic moves. They they should think about that in some places in the U.S. I like that because you know how long you're sitting at the stop sign and counting down. Um, but you know you got motorcycles. There's more motorcycles than cars on the road. There's tricycles. There's people sh shooting out of everywhere, coming out of everywhere. So. And the other thing is that most of the most foreigners, expats and visitors that end up in the hospital here is because they're having motorcycle accidents, guys. Guys that never drove a motorcycle in the U.S. all of a sudden 
get on a motorcycle here and they think they know how to drive it and they don't. I, I don't do it because I don't drive a motorcycle. If I drive something here, it's a car. I know a car. I can drive any car. I can drive any truck. But I'm not a motorcycle guy, and I don't all of a sudden jump on there and act like I am. A lot of guys end up with broken bones, fractured legs, all kinds of stuff. I was told by a doctor that most of the people that come there for foreigners to the hospital are from motorcycle, riding motorcycle. If you already do that in the U.S., no problem. But if you're going to ride, buy a motorcycle or even rent a motorcycle, guys, learn how to ride it before you jump and try to deal with this traffic. Cause it's it's not it's not for the squeamish. So oh, these, are, oh, these are things that you got to know. I mean, and remember this. And Charles can also tell you this: transportation is dirt cheap. You can ride a cab from one end of the city to the other for under six bucks. Six mm -hmm. bucks. A tricycle going to the mall costs you a dollar, maybe seventy pesos. Yeah. So. You don't need a car to get around. You don't, mm -hmm. it's good to have it if you want to live here. That's, you can have it, but it's not a necessity because you can get a chauffeur to drive you around for very, very inexpensive. You can get yep. the cab driver's number, he'll come pick you up anytime you want. Yep. Day or night. And so, guys, you can get a massage, a therapeutic massage. The agency will send a person to your house. And give you a massage, it costs six dollars US for an hour therapeutic massage that makes you feel like you're on top of the world. Um, there's so many things here that you have advantages to lower your blood pressure. It's a non-aggressive society. You don't have to walk around stressed out all the time here. And you know, I, I had high blood pressure and I still take the medication, which you're able to get it all here. But this is the difference. And this is what the doctor told me. You're taking the same blood pressure medicine you took in the U.S. You're just living in a society that's less stressful and it's allowing it to work. <laughs> wow. So, guys, America is hard on your health. It is. And yeah. we don't realize that it's so hard on our health until we get into another environment and say, wow, everybody doesn't live in that matrix rat race type situation. But yet these people work six days a week, 10, 12 hours a day. But they know how to, to enjoy and relax because on their day off or their evening off, they're out at the, the, the resto club or the resto uh, uh, restaurant with live music in most every place you go, they know how to enjoy yourself. Everything is with food. Everything is with music. It's either karaoke. They're grilling on their grills. And it's a lifestyle that I just blended into very easily, guys. Mm -hmm. Very easily. That's the one thing that what I... What do you think you about know, the lifestyle? I, here? Well... You know, that's what we talk about on the God principles. And, you know, I'd appreciate you go over there and subscribe to that, too. It's it's about life in the Philippines. And I try to Charles focus channel on... channel is called the God, the God Principles, guys. And go over there and check his channel out at the God Principles. It's on YouTube. Sorry about that. Go ahead, Charles. That's, that's okay, William. You know, this this the way we do it anyway. Normally, William be sitting, we be sitting in my living room and the camera be on us and we just have a conversation and we just let it go with the flow. So, but on my channel, what I've also attempted to do is I've interviewed other people that have been living here. That's one of the things I wanted to show because you very rarely see, you'll see a, a, a travel vlogger talk about it. But I'm interviewing people that have been here 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And they have a whole different take on the Philippines. It's, I, yeah. I like to say that they show you what I would call, we would consider miracles. You know, I mean, they're all, the guys over here in the base water, they're all business owners. They own businesses. Yeah. That's you know, because they're married to Filipinas, they're able to uh, have car wash. One guy got a car wash. 
another guy he's uh has a digital marketing well e-commerce business uh, a lot of them have real estate here on um airbnb so that that's the one thing that i want to cover because william and i first noticed that people have a hard time trying to say well how do i supplement my income so i can transition faster and so on the god principles that's the kind of things that i cover how do you pick a filipino because you're going if you come in here by yourself most of us do we only we only have one guy he came here with his wife you're going to want to have a relationship with the filipina and uh i'm about to talk about that look guys <laughs> do not waste your time talking to these women unless you got a list number one how many kids do you have are you working where's the father of the kids are you living with your mother all these things come straight out the gate with it if any of those things don't yeah. meet your requirements leave them don't waste your time don't when the you're worst thing when you're getting in the relationship guys you gotta and this is why i recommend that 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 if you're going to be in an ldr it's it's a little different um than being in person and I, I tell you that a lot of times when you're going to these um, dating sites, and let's just talk about that. Okay. You're not getting the full situation. I, uh, uh, Filipinas won't, some of them won't tell you they got kids that the aunt is watching on another island. Two and three kids. Some of them won't tell you that they're married. They're married. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I can tell you a story of guys that met Filipinas and they were with them for a while, not knowing that they, they had a husband, you know, and they, and my wife, Junie Lee told me in Mindanao, she lived next to a woman that all she did was stay, her job was to go online and seduce foreigners yep. into sending her money. And that's how she made her living. Her husband was in on it. Whenever a foreigner decided that he liked her well enough that he was coming to the Philippines, she stopped talking to him and would move on to the next one. Juni Lee said she had two new cars. She lived in one of the better houses in the neighborhood. And her only job was to scam guys on that dating site. This is why I met my wife on Christian Filipina. They vet, is Charles saying, you have to vet, you have to, if you're doing it yourself, ask the appropriate questions. Are you married? How many, do you have children? Do you work? What's the situation? So that when you, if you get to meet them in person, and then another thing is, is if you're talking to them, and every time you call, it seems like they have to jump off the phone, they'll be right back and this and that. They're probably juggling two and three guys. So there's a lot of things to be aware of. The reason I recommend Christian Filipina, as I said, I use them myself. There's normally much more serious women on that website than on ones like Filipina Cupid or I'll name, I would name some other ones, but I recommend this one. And none of them are perfect guys, but I would say that this yeah. one is screened it's screened better than the other ones. And it is what its title says. A lot of the girls are Catholic. Some are just straight a Christian without being a Catholic. And you could talk about that because they're, they're, as the name implies, Christian Filipina. Um, most of these girls, they couldn't be on there if they weren't vetted. If one slips through the cracks, Christian Filipina catches up with them pretty quick to get them off of there. So, hey, Will, Will. I was I was chatting with one of these women that I met on a Facebook group and she said this. She she said I'm I'm an empathetic and compassionate person. And I recognize that language as something from See you later, uh, Dad. Appreciate you checking in. Have a good yeah, night over there. All right, have a good night, man. Dos bagios. Okay. And so 
overnight guard left with the gate keys 13 hours ago hasn't been back yeah that's happened people we get the we have the keys as the security guard and by the time we get ready to leave we just go jump in our car and get out of there and we get home and say uh oh i got the security keys in my pocket and have to drive all the way back i i can identify with what he's talking about but anyway she said so i said oh you know I reached out to her because she was talking about she wanted to meet and have a conversation with someone. So I reached out to her. I said, oh, I recognize those terms from Buddhism. She says, I don't follow no particular religion. I learned, leave that alone. <laughs> leave yes. that alone. Because it's like, if she don't follow no religion, she following herself. And you, it's like, uh-uh. And the conversation went, she was a uh, 48 years old. She was a school teacher because I went over on Facebook and looked at her profile. And then yeah. she come asking me about my age. I said, does age matter? She said, no, yeah. but I'd like to know. I told her. I said, well, look, we you can't make this up, man. It's like, if age didn't matter, what you asked for? Exactly. You see what I'm saying? That don't make sense. And no. So you saw that she was on some type of script that she was working on. And yeah. I bring that up because don't get catfished. They be catfishing on these you know, Facebook groups. Um, if they, yeah, if they, if they weren't making money, they, all all of those channels wouldn't be uh, uh, popular. Them mm -hmm. girls are are trolling. There's a lot of them. There's some good ones, but there's a lot of trolling. There's a lot of scamming. There's a lot of uh, uh, senior men that have lost a lot of money. We could tell you stories that are true, Ooh. that people got left at the airport. The, the guy had a heart attack. This is true, guys, right here in Lapu Lapu City, right at Macton Airport, five miles from here. The guy Not came and sent, sent all his money over here to get a house built by a girl he never met. Once again, this is what Juni Lai and I at Juni Lai Williams Adventures always say. If you're in an LDR, if you've never met the girl in person at least once, Preferably more. But if you've never met her, do not, do not send her any money to someone you've never met in person. Just don't do it, guys. If you follow that rule, you will not get catfish. You will not get scammed. Because there are, I've married now. I've been married for since last year. I dated Junie Lee for three years. LDR and I came and we lived together for another year after the year, that year. And then we decided to uh, get engaged and set a date. It took all together about four years, guys. Four years. That's how sure I wanted to be. Um, and so the one thing that you should have, another thing, and we're talking about one of your must-haves, what must you bring when you come to the Philippines? Patience. Patience. Uh, yeah. Pack your patience. Yeah. Talk about you that, Charles. Well, I'm, I'm, they, patience, we need a different word. We, <laughs> this this <laughs> Filipino patience is a whole different thing. You know, you got to have patience yes. trying to put your life together because you're trying to create a new lifestyle and it, it has periods of adjustment that you're going to go through mentally, physically, and even spiritually. If you really want to immerse yourself into this island lifestyle, because it's the island lifestyle, I have no idea what that felt like. Because I was talking to somebody and I said, this place reminds me of California. I visited California years ago and being from Chicago yeah. in the Midwest and you got over there and you saw how laid back everybody was. And it's like, yes. what's wrong with these people? You know, what's wrong with these people? They, they, no, it has to do with the climate and the environment. You're going to have to adjust. Your blood system stream is going to adjust. Your blood pressure, yeah. uh, you're going to run into things that are positive. William talked about, uh, what was that you just said? You know, it was something that we could adopt here. The one thing that I liked, this is, is some of the things that they do. Like when we go to the store and you get one of them plastic bags. Now in yes. America, you'd have to tie the handles together. Yeah. Their plastic bags got a thing right in the middle 
built in yeah. for you to tie the bag together. I said, now that's that's really unique that yeah. they didn't thought of that. It's like, wow, we can yeah. do that. Um, yes. So there are little things to make that they have thought of that makes life a whole lot better. And one yeah, they're, they're, to, they've, they've adjusted to their surroundings very well. They're, as Charles said, they're island nation, so they don't have a lot of uh, the same natural uh, 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 things that we have in the U.S., the materials, uh, their islands. So they've adapted to use, as we say, what's in their hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're using, yeah. They're using yeah. what they got. And so, and they use it well, guys. I mean, in the United States, all of us have water uh, containers here, five gallon water canisters that are sitting in the dispenser. And they're in most every townhouse, every condo that you go to. This is what it is because you don't want to drink the water. That's another thing we're talking about. Yeah. But for the five gallons of water, we're paying like 30 pesos. 25, 30 pesos for the five gallons. In the United States of five gallons of water, can you imagine what that would cost every time you get it? Here, you get five, six of them. It's like $2. $2.50 for five of them. And so- Is that what you're getting? Yeah. I, I pay 70 pesos for three. And the guy comes and picks these things up and brings yeah. them back. They, they, they take them. I think I pay about 30 pesos a piece. Yeah. That ain't no money. It's, no, it's he wild. comes and he comes and brings them. He comes and picks up the empty ones and brings back full ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. but in the US, I, I'm telling you that a bottle of water costs more than two five gallon bottles here. One yep. bottle, one 12 ounce bottle in the in the 7 Eleven. Cost almost two dollars. So there's a big difference. One of the one of the greatest things that you'll ever do when you come to the Philippines is save on your rent. That's where your big your savings, guys, is going to be. Um, I rent my house out in the U.S. and I rent it for a minimum amount: four bedrooms, a garage, uh, one and a half baths. It's in a decent neighborhood. I rent it for $1,500 to my grandson and, and a couple other relatives, which I don't know if that's the best idea. I would rethink it if I had it to do over again. But I'm saying that here, you can get a house similar to that, probably for $400 US, $400 guy. So even if, you're in, if your monthly budget is $2,000, well, seventeen hundred to two thousand dollars from Social Security, and you're living here. If your rent is only three hundred or four hundred U.S., you can see where your savings comes in for life. That opens up money for you to travel. That opens up money for you to enjoy your life that you didn't have that opportunity in the U.S. Because if you're going to Florida and you're from the East Coast, you're going to uh, California. Uh, um, some of the places that Charles and I have visited, let's say Batanian Island, if that was in the U.S., that would have cost thousands of dollars to go there. Yeah. And you could go there for pennies on the dollar um, in, here in the Philippines, whereas people that weren't able to take vacations that were living on the lower end of the, the, the totem pole, living in the Philippines, they can live their best life now. This is one of the reasons that guys are transitioning. Guys, it's not not just the women, it is also the cost of living. I was just watching Charles' show for 2024 that rated the top 10 countries for cost of living, the lowest cost of living. Guess where the Philippines was at in the top 10 for 2024? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's an upcoming, it's an upcoming. They were number country. one. Number one, lowest cost of living, number mm -hmm. one, over mm -hmm. Thailand, over, over all those countries, number one. So anyway, I want to go back to uh, some stories that recently came out. William, did you see the, the story? I think it was Mike in the Philippines or something. 
he talked about because you were talking about what could happen before you get in a relationship. He talked about some stuff that happened when the guys were in a relationship. One of the guys was with a Filipina and she was controlling the finances and he they'd been together for years. Then she used up all of his money and left him. He ended up committing suicide. There was another one. She went away to visit somebody and she she was going to be away for a couple of months and he was drinking because some of these people come over here with uh, uh, alcohol and drug problems and he was drinking he passed out hit his head and bled to death wow these right right it's like you think you're safe uh uh-uh. if you're coming over here drink with a drinking problem uh yeah I don't know if you want to do that because the alcohol is too cheap here. Way too cheap. It's very, if, if you have an alcohol problem, this is probably not the place to come realistically mm-hmm. because the alcohol is too easy to get. It's too inexpensive to get. And it, if you're a person that gets angry, as I've seen in some of the places that I went where people lost their temper that were foreign, it's mm-hmm. just not a good idea. But, you know, if you have the occasional drink and you, or you like to go out, you know, and you like to sit on your patio and, 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 and invite your friends over, it's the perfect place to sit and eat your food, sit on your patio, which you can have here. The weather's always nice. You can grill yourself. You can enjoy mm-hmm. your cookouts every night if you want. You can drink your beer. You can drink your wine. You can drink some liquor, whatever you choose to do. Or you can go out to the resto resto restaurants where there's live music, have you a drink, have you a, uh, uh, whatsoever you want. Um, but just not going to the pool halls all the time and getting boisterous in some of the bars, um, going to the ladies bars and spending your money up in those things. A lot of guys want to live that lifestyle and you can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying if you're going to do that, don't be a person that make, lets liquor do the talking for you because it's not going to end well, guys. It, the, your lifestyle that you bring with you to the Philippines is going to dictate what you do in the Philippines. Right. So, Because the one thing that you can't get away from is who you are. Whoever you are is going to travel with you. If that's a rock, a rock is person that likes to party all the time, that's okay. As long as you don't let the party get you killed like that gentleman did. Because I guarantee you this, guys, one thing I can tell you for sure, when that guy was doing his pre-planning to come to the Philippines, dying wasn't in his plan. It wasn't in his plan, guys. So, you know, you don't want to come to a place that has beautiful white sand beaches, beautiful blue water, beautiful women, beautiful people, and come over here and get yourself shot by bringing some foreign attitude with you. Check it at the door, guys, and enjoy yourself when you come to the Philippines. Because after all, it's a world-class place to have vacation or live. You know some William? It's starting to... I, I was watching um, the Black Filipino, and yes. he, he's got a YouTube video of another... Uh, passport bro his thing was down in South yes. America and so they were in BGC in Manila and he has a popular channel and he was shocked at how modern BGC is it is it is a beautiful place yes. it's safe it's, it's a totally modern city and he said there ain't nothing like that in America Nothing. When you see BGC, yeah. these yeah. modern places like th- that they didn't put the money into, you're going to be shocked. You're going to be really shocked. You're going to see how behind America is. America is not that advanced as it was anymore. These people got the newest stuff. The, the very I, 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 I went out, Charles, the other night, me and my wife went out on a date night, and um, we went to a place called Basic. And it was on the second deck. 
it looked down on the street mm -hmm. where you could see all the traffic. Mm -hmm. There was live music as there is in most of these mm -hmm. places. Um, the atmosphere was just the ambiance was was wonderful. Um, to, to go to a place where there's live music in the United States, and I I love live music. You pay an arm and a leg, an arm and a leg, if you're going to try to find a music club in the U.S. where they have food, where they have live music, where they have good ambiance. You're gonna pay a premium price for that. Over here in the Philippines, and I'm talking about. Any place that you go usually has live music if it's a food place, even a barbecue. And I think that for the whole night out, Junie Lai and I paid 679 pesos for our food and the music. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not a mathematician, but that's under $20. That's under $20. And we both ate everything we wanted to eat. And what are you going to get in the West for $15 that got live music and food? And we're so behind over in the West. We, If you've never been out of the United States, you think that that's all there is. But that's what Charles on his channel, once again, guys, Charles is with his YouTube channel is called The God Principles. Check him out. He has a lot of good things on there. He does interviews. He does a lot of things. Check him out, guys, because we try to educate people and inform people that you have to get outside the box once in a while and yeah. see that there's a big world out there, especially if you're over 50 and you're over 60 and you're, you're most of your life. You have more life behind you than in front of you, so to speak. Doesn't matter. This could be the best part of your life in, in this part of your life if you are willing to step out there on faith and see some other things. If you're inside of a box, everything looks the same. But as soon as you climb up yeah. and look outside yeah. and see there's a whole big world outside that box. Yeah. I love the United States. I was a military guy. I still love the United States. But the United States ain't all there is, guys. Especially if you're trying to stretch your money in this portion of your life. There is other options, guys. And that's a lot of times what I... We try to tell people, especially here at Juni Live and Williams Adventures, our channel is geared to informing people about what it takes to live a different life now. What does it take to live your best life now? I mean, Charles, a lot of guys come to the are, are widowers. <laughs> they're living your dreams. They're, they're widowers or they have been through a bad divorce. They're in an empty nest. Yeah. They're, they're, their children are grown. And they're sitting at home. Their circle of friends have died off. And they all they know is work. And that's coming to an end because they're ready to stop working. And they're sitting at house with the, they don't have the circle of friends they used to have. Um, the kids are not in the house. They're grown. They don't have their wife no more. They're either widowed or she's, or they've been through a bad divorce. And they're figuring, well, now I'm still viable. What do I do with this part of my life? This is what we're saying. Up to hey, the guys, Philippines. That's, where that's I what you do. That's where I found myself and I said, you know, I'm not ready to fade away yet and just go off the scene. And I rejuvenated my life, guys, by making this transition. I planned it, I pre-planned it, and then I executed my plan. And it's one of the best things that I've ever done. And so you can do it too, guys. You can do it too. And that's what on Charles Channel, The God Principle, he tells you how. How you can make money, even when you're here. He, he'll tell you about that. Watch his channel. And yeah. you, when you're watching Junior Line Wings, we're going to tell you what you need. Um, we're going to interact with you. So, guys, remember, subscribe to the channel, like, and we'll continue to put out information that we think will help the people yeah. that need awakening in their lives. Anything you want to say, Charles? I guess we'll go about 10 more minutes. Okay, good. I could use up the whole ten too. No, 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 you know, you get to go. <laughs> All right. He was talking about basic. See, now I'm living a single lifestyle. I, you want to, you want to know what it's like to be treated like a rich person. On oh, so, come here. Wow. Come here. I went. I went. I'm serious, William. When I was with uh, the yeah. that El, the Filipina. I went to a club 
And she said, well, we can get a VIP section. I said, VIP section? He said, yeah, it's only 6,000 pesos. Now, 6,000 pesos is about $120. Yeah. We took, I had her and my entourage, okay? It got about eight yeah. of us, all right, sitting up in this VIP box with security guards. And I the $6,000 paid for everything. We drank. I didn't drink. They did. You know, and, and snacks and everything for 6,000 pesos. So now wow. I'm living like, yeah, it's it's like, wow, I can get used to this. You know, it's like I was a party animal. I don't have to stop partying just because I came here. As a matter yeah. of fact, they cater. I'm telling you, when you see them lifestyles in America where uh, the rich people are doing stuff and you say, wow, how can they do that? Because in America, their economics is at the top. Over here, our economics yeah. is at the top. So we're treated that way. We're treated yes. like rich yes. because we are. So yes, that's the one thing. And it was something else, but I got so excited about that, <laughs> that nightclub <laughs> thing. I, I forgot what else I wanted to say. <laughs> it's the truth. Uh, yeah, I mean, you come over here, uh, where we where we live. Base what I was at a birthday party last night, and the one thing I noticed about it, I was the only African American there, but it was Filipinos, yeah. Germans, Danish, Australians, Canadians, all here in Basewater, and that was the kind of experience that I came for. I did not come here to bring America with me. I was right. never, I was, I was never that kind of person to want to congregate with just one ethnic group. My lifestyle is totally different, and I now it's just opened a whole new lifestyle to me that I'm able to live. That I never, in my wildest dreams, believed that this would ever happen. Will you? be perfectly honest. I agree. I, I, I was the kind of guy like you, Charles, that. I was in the military, so, and I was a pastor for 10 years, and I worked in a mental health hospital, so I was a DNA counselor, chaplain. So I dealt with all kinds of people um, from every end. I've met guys from every end of America. And let me tell mm -hmm. you something, guy. Um, the state, some of the states in America are bigger than countries, you know? So really, yeah. when you look at America from outside of America, each state is like its own country. It's it's its own, each state in America is like its own country. Uh, Pennsylvania, yep. where I'm from, is totally different from Florida. Florida is totally mm -hmm. different from Illinois or Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, Philadelphia is totally different from Texas. So over here, what we've learned is that no matter where you go, whether you want to be or not, you're an ambassador from the United States. You are. Because the only thing some of them know about the United States is you. They've never met anybody from there. I've been to parts of different islands that they hardly ever seen a black American before. And they were looking at me like I was from the moon, but it wasn't in a racist way. It was curiosity. Yeah. They'd seen yeah. you on TV, but they never seen you in person. And I, I had people running up to me, I'm tall, six, two, six, three. And they say, hey, are you Michael Jordan? Who, yeah. who are you, yeah. are you a star? I said, no. You know, I'm I'm just an American. He said, "No." He said, "You're somebody. I know it. You're somebody." I said, "Okay." I, I you know they did, Wayne. You no, know they did. <laughs> I had to say, you experience. just don't want anybody to know. <laughs> you know well, so that's it, it's it. a it's a it's a it's an eye opening experience, guys. It's an eye opening experience. It really is in a good way. That you know, like Charles you. said, if you've never been treated like a rock star. Some places here you are. You are. Ooh, yeah. Because I had the same experience. I'm not tall, but I told them I'm from Chicago. And they said, do you know Michael Jordan? I said, well, that's a heck of a question. Way over here on this side of the world. But William, I was thinking about how the African-American culture has been absorbed all over the planet. OK, I'm doing yes. some live podcasts with uh, uh, people in the marketing and business world. And it's a friend of mine. She wrote uh, a book called Let Me Tell You About Black, 
when they over here rapping and stuff, it's like, wait a minute. You know, yeah. the, the the black cult, the African American culture has been absorbed all over this planet. So you're gonna come here and you're gonna see them some things real familiar. One of the things that sure. I am, I am the public relations. Uh oh. Uh oh, this light is starting to hold on. So yeah, oh. guys, that's the thing. Oh God. hold on. I want to tell them about. I'm the public relations person for Brothers in the Philippines. We have started up an association where you can reach us on the internet. The website is brothersinthephilippines.com. You can sign up to our newsletter and our website, and we're building an information base to help you navigate this situation uh, because you don't want to come in here with not any having some contact here because when you come here uh you could be taken advantage of like we had a guy from minnesota but he's african he's retired from the bus company he got here and his hotel room they didn't have one for him and somebody told him yeah i got one for you but it's gonna cost you six hundred dollars for one night you got taken advantage of like that that's why we started the Brothers in the Philippines. Um, the other thing is I'll be podcasting stories from other parts of the Philippines, from people that live here, both foreigners of different nationalities, uh, Filipinos, to give you a broad stroke look at the Philippines so you can really see how beautiful this place is if you come here with an open mind and absorb it for what it is. That's all I got, William. Yeah, guys, uh, we're going to get ready to close it down. We appreciate everybody that checked in. I want to send a certain shout, uh, a special shout out to my channel members, Benjamin, uh, Dave, who we call Jake, David, um, Parasite, and anyone I'm forgetting, you know we appreciate you here at Juni Lion Williams Adventures. Guys, if you want to look in our links and check out any one of the things that I talked about, whether it's Christian Filipina, whether it's safety wing travel insurance, also there's a visa, agency Filipina visa, that you might want to check out for those of you trying to get your Filipina back to the United States. We also have Filipina visa, which you can check out in our description. And of course, guys, the ever famous, go ahead and buy us a coffee, guys. Check it out in our link. We appreciate you. We appreciate uh, those that have watched, those that will be watching this um, live later. Mm -hmm. Remember mm -hmm. to comment. Once again, Mike, we always appreciate you for waiting and being the first one in. Rick, if you're watching, we appreciate you. Go over there the next time and check out the God Principles channel that Charles is on. Please. Check out what he's doing there and uh, take advantage of the VIP, the Brothers in the Philippines, and uh, the information about that. And guys, Junie Lee should be back next time. And we'll be making a video before I leave for the Philippines. And we'll be making quite a uh, leave for the United States from the Philippines. And we'll be making some videos, and Charles will be involved in that too from the United States. Right, right. That should be a whole new thing to broadcast. We'll do from some live podcasts, and we'll be Li showing you the difference between the U.S. <laughs> and, and here. Um, some of the places in Philadelphia where fentanyl is just taking over, guys. Oh, uh, it's it's not good. I might even go to uh, Valley Forge where uh, George Washington, my, who I was named after, my name is William Washington, where he crossed the Delaware. That was the first battle that won independence for the United States. I'll take you to Valley Forge. Uh, some people from all over the world come there, but it's just a park mm -hmm. to me because I live near there. Um, so, and there's some other things. I want to so say some guys that were here, one of my friends, he said, William, make sure when you go back to the US, the one thing I could not find here in the Philippines was a hoagie from Philadelphia. He said, show, <laughs> show them making a hoagie so these people will know what a hoagie is. <laughs> right. I said, 
So I'll make sure I go to a hoagie shop and show it, guys. Once again, yeah. Charles, you want to say any last words? Yes. Uh, thank you for having me on. I've enjoyed this. I look forward to the podcast when you're in America because you're going to show the real America that doesn't get shown over here. And you're going to see why we left America. I want to ask people to subscribe to the God Principles because I've got some live broadcasts coming showing you how the lifestyle that you can live over here is beyond your wildest dreams. And I'm serious. I'm serious. This area that we live in yes. is full of resorts all yes. over the place. And yes. you can go over there for, a few, for 50, 50 bucks and be there all weekend, you know, laying on the beach like you see rich people do. I'm going to be chewing it, some more of that. I you, really it, am. It, it costs less. It costs less. He, he's right, guys. It costs less than a tank of gas for you to go to one of these resorts. Less. Mm hmm um, so, mm -hmm. guys, we're going to see you next time. Uh, remember to like and share this video. Check out the, the links in the description. And this is, this is William from Junie Lyon Williams Adventures saying for Charles Davis uh, and the God uh, Principles uh, YouTube channel. We'll see you next time, guys. Until then, as yep. I always say, enjoy every day because tomorrow is not promised. See you mm -hmm. later, guys. <laughs> Mabuha. <laughs>